All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesday edition of the Daily Devotions through Mount Gilead Church. Uh, Staff is doing these, and uh, we love jumping into God's Word. We love to see how it fuels our life and how it helps us to become lifelong disciples of Jesus. My name is Fred. I work with high school students and young adults here at Mount Gilead Church. And I'm glad to say we have finished the grant for, uh, for young adults, and we're looking forward to receiving that and making just more opportunities for young adults to get connected. So if you're in the college age or post-college age, um, please just uh, keep in mind those, those opportunities are coming. We're jumping in. Uh, my devotions on uh, Tuesday are a, a thread through Scripture to just show how God's Word is so powerfully woven together, and it shows the, the story of Jesus. So I'm glad that you're tracking along, and even if you're going to watch this later, uh, I hope this is a blessing to you. Uh, I think every time we open God's Word, it's a blessing to our life. Our, our stop today goes right in. We're, we've been in Psalms for the last two, so you can go back and watch those if you want to. Um, but uh, but we're, stop, we're going today into Psalms uh, 23, Psalm 23, and just the first couple verses. Psalm 23 is one of the most popular scriptures in all of the Bible. Um, it's most popular because it gets cross-stitched on pillows and things like that, or, you know, onto blankets and, and things that to just be a, a reminder of who God is in our life. And so it's just kind of been like, you know, a maybe even a precious moment. So my, my mom used to have a ton of precious moments. So, you know, um, it's been one of those verses, but let's not, let's not misuse the scripture and see that there's so much power here Uh, in Psalm 23. Here's how it starts. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. When the Lord is our shepherd, when he is our leader, we don't lack anything. He gives us what we need may not necessarily be what we want. And he's a good shepherd. He leads us to green pastures, to quiet waters. In other words, when the Lord is your shepherd, there is peace in your life. And I I know for me, a lot of times when I realize that there's this unrest, when there's not peace, when there's frustration after frustration, I'm going through a a season where uh, there's just all this unrest. I have to take a, a step back and realize Maybe I'm trying to be the shepherd instead of allowing God to be the shepherd in my life, instead of trusting him to be the shepherd. I, I don't know about you, but I, I tend to really like having control. When, when I don't have control over things, I start to feel unrest. I start to feel fearful. Um, and I love scriptures like this that remind us that he is the good shepherd. But this verse, uh, this passage points to Jesus, and Jesus actually refers to himself as a shepherd as the good shepherd in John chapter 10. So if you if you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those four books contain the stories of Jesus and his ministry while he was here on earth. And in John chapter 10, he he refers to himself as the good shepherd, as someone who is leading people, leading sheep uh, to God in a, in a good way. So he says, starting in verse 7 of chapter 10, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All right? All those, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so a lot of times we think Jesus is, and God is like restrictive of us. He's got all these rules and regulations, these types of things. This is actually a verse here that says, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come to actually give you life. And the best way that I can give you life is to show you that there are, there are some boundaries here. But within these boundaries, there's so much freedom. There is incredible freedom. And Jesus says, I am the gate. In other words, this is how we enter into a relationship with God. It's through the gate. It's through Jesus that we're saved, that we have a relationship with God. And then he continues, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Listen to this. This is great if you're in leadership of any kind. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. 
So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Verse 13, Jesus says, The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. So Jesus is saying the shepherd is invested in the sheep and is is invested in the well-being of the sheep. A hired hand, someone who just comes to, to get their money, and then when the tough times comes, they're out of there. No, Jesus says when the tough time comes, that's when I lean in more. That's when I show more of my shepherdness to to you as the sheep. I don't run away. I am the good shepherd. He continues in verse 14. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And then we'll just finish with this. And I lay down my life for the sheep. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And it's through Jesus, that we have a relationship with God. So when you read Psalm 23, let it remind you of Jesus. Let it remind you that God is a good shepherd, that he uh, can give you everything that you need um, and not just, not just maybe what you want, but he's a good shepherd that way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this reminder from your word. Thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light for our path. It reminds us when we're off track. It, it pulls us back. It shows us that you are the good shepherd. You give us everything we need. You bring peace into our life. And through Jesus, we see that um, you being a shepherd over us is one of love and one of sacrifice on your part. And you're calling us to do the same. Thank you for leading us so powerfully. Thank you for being a good shepherd. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope this was encouraging for you today, and we'll be back again next Tuesday with, with more uh, walk through Scripture to see how it's so powerfully woven together. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll look forward to talking with you some in the comments. Take care.